Now we'll be implementing protocols in the coming months to eliminate spam bots and authenticate humans. And we'll also be making our algorithms open source to increase trust. But that's like honest. Yes, we want to increase trust. <laughs> I don't think honesty is how you increase trust. You see, we've been using a manipulative algorithm to increase trust with our users. Yeah, we're gonna be going with honesty on this one. I do not approve. On behalf of Elon, I want you to know, I sincerely do not care. We've got a company to run and free speech to save. <laughs> Free speech is what allows you to complain about free speech. You're using it right now, sport. <laughs> Where are the censorship and fact-checking departments? They're on the far left side of the fourth floor. Okay. As soon as we're done here, I want you to go down there and unplug all their computers. Happy to, but... Wouldn't they just be sitting there all day doing nothing? Yes, that's actually far more valuable to the company now. Um, hey, could I be excused to go deplatform someone real quick for saying something I don't like? No. Oh, but deplatforming feels so good to do. <laughs> that's not even comedy anymore. That's actually what's happening at Twitter HQ, which you're about to find out in this video. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukradowski here of WeAreChange.org, and there is a lot of absolutely crazy news unfolding, not only in Ukraine, but now in Moldova, where the conflict may spill over to. This as the Russians keep threatening graver and graver consequences for what already is an absolute crap show that the entire world is in. What's really going on here? What's going to be happening? We're going to be talking about that. Plus, all the latest crazy Elon Musk news, microchips connecting people to the internet, and governments in a hissy fit trying to shut down free speech. And, and they get to complain about free speech because there's free speech. A great point made by Awaken with JP, who, of course, we played a small clip of his latest video in the beginning of this broadcast. You could watch the full video as we are going to be linking it down in the description below. And it is absolutely hilarious and right on the money when it comes to detailing the crazy, insane cancel culture that we are now dealing with with the larger Twitter Elon Musk controversy that was perfect perfectly represented by Awaken with JP. Truly brilliant work that definitely deserves a follow and a watch, highlighting how ridiculous our current situation is, as of course, major corporate entities and even former presidents are making the argument that free speech is dangerous to our democracy, which is absolutely a psychologically deranged point to make, highlighting how mentally ill elements of the establishment are when it comes to their shocking, outrageous reactions towards concepts of people just being able to speak freely together. This nonsense is usually regurgitated by the corporate media that promotes the billionaires that support their larger agenda and narrative and attacks the ones that don't, as perfectly represented by these two extremely biased, quote, pieces of journalism by the Business Insider that literally wrote an article that was titled Billionaire Jeff Bezos, Washington Post by marks a fascinating, quote, cultural transition in America. Their take on Elon Musk was that, quote, Elon Musk's attempt to buy Twitter represents a chilling new threat. Billionaire trolls taking over social media. Yeah, gee whiz, I, I do see a little bit of bias there, to say the least. And that bias is represented by a lot of un unaccountable secret technocrats that are making decisions for you, your family, and the future of this country that are absolutely destructive to its future. This as just recently, we found out how woke Amazon employees were crying and discussing their trauma because someone made a children's book that doesn't conform to their larger gender ideology. The company literally held meetings discussing what to do with the children's book that's not even that controversial. And since they can't ban it or remove it, because the book doesn't violate any of its vague general terms and services and use, Amazon decided to, of course, claim that the book is, quote, political commentary, have pulled it from their children's category, and now made it very difficult to find and buy to the general public, who, of course, is going to be denied access to it, and these ideas because of some deranged, flip-flop-wearing, Starbucks-drinking, limousine-liberal lunatic that just decided, no, 
These ideas and concepts are too dangerous for you. Me, the overlord, will decide what can go inside of your brain and not. And, and that to me is just a ridiculous idea. And now this idea finally is being pushed back by individuals like Elon Musk that just recently responded to a Twitter user talking about how, how Vegeta Gaddi, Twitter's top censorship advocate, banned the Hunter Biden laptop story from being rebroadcasted on their social media platform, a highly unethical move that, of course, helped the current president of the United States gain his position of power. And Elon Musk responded to this very controversial truth that many people know about by saying, quote, suspending the Twitter account of a major news organization. He's talking about the New York Post here, quote, for publishing a truthful story was obviously incredibly inappropriate, highlighting a major issue showing clear collusion that happened within the current power presidential establishment executive office and, of course, big tech social media that colluded to help each other out during the 2020 presidential election. This this statement that Elon Musk made a few moments ago has a lot of very serious implications especially with him taking over the company very soon. And this could be why we're getting reports of Vijaya literally crying at the news of Elon Musk's take over. Now, why is she crying? Is she someone that is emotionally stable? Does she have something to hide here? Well, soon enough, we are going to be, of course, finding out here as a lot of people are speculating that there was a lot of dirty, sinister, underhanded, illegal, and immoral moves made by Twitter, that there was lying to Congress, that the general public will soon find out, especially after the takeover of this company by Elon Musk. Now, this takeover is going to be taking about six months. If Twitter backs out of it and doesn't go along with this takeover, Twitter will have to pay Elon Musk $1 billion. If Elon Musk backs away from this deal, he will have to pay Twitter $1 billion. And there's another very interesting clause to this larger takeover of Twitter. And that, of course, is that Elon Musk is, quote, banned from criticizing his own platform that he bought. Yes, one of the clauses inside of this Twitter buyout agreement is that he is banned from tweeting criticism about the company. Now, he, of course, is pushing the limits of that, especially with his latest comments that we just read to you. And I, I think it's already fair to say that a lot of things are being reverted by Twitter as there has been an astonishing surprise to a lot of people's follower accounts, engagement that has been happening, particularly against people deemed to be anti anti-establishment like myself, as of course, I, I, I tweeted less. My impressions, my, my followers went up almost 20,000 within the span of just a few hours. Yes, I received almost 20,000 new followers within the span of just a few hours after Elon Musk had officially bought Twitter. What's going on here? Well, a lot of people are saying that there has been some very underhanded, dirty tricks played by Twitter to the point where even U.S. Senator Josh Hawley has just tweeted to Elon Musk saying, quote, open the books on who Twitter shadow banned, who Twitter has suspended, who they throttled, and who was responsible for the egregious censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop reporting. Make it all public. This, an official letter issued to Elon Musk. Will he do that with this clause, with this takeover that still might take six months? It might be still six months until Elon Musk is at the headquarters of Twitter. That's a very long time. A lot of things could go many different ways during this time. And let's be honest here, with Elon Musk representing the larger ideas of free speech, he has gained himself a lot of enemies. The corporate media has attacked him. Governments like the European Union are now warning that if he doesn't curate and moderate content, that his platform could be banned in all of Europe. This as big bureaucratic Becky statists like this creature representing the European Union have literally said, quote, be it cars or social media, any company operating in Europe needs to comply with our rules regardless of their shareholding. Mr. Musk knows this well. He is familiar with European rules on automotive and will quickly adapt to the Digital Service Act, an act that Europe is pushing 
which again calls for moderation of online content, which is the exact opposite of, of free speech. Now, Elon Musk has made many statements saying that, of course, he will respect speech that is lawful, any speech that is not lawful, according to the local laws and jurisdictions where it is practiced, will, of course, have intervention from the state and local law enforcement that will intercede, especially when it comes to any kind of illegal activities conducted on his platform. Seems reasonable. Not according to this bureaucratic Becky, as of course, it's important to point out that there also has been an important new interest by bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., calling for, quote, now greater oversight of social media, as of course, the White House, members of Congress and some lawmakers are calling for more restrictions on big tech social media. And I just have to leave myself asking now, really? Now is the appropriate time that, that, that you want to do this? Are you freaking kidding me? This is ridiculous. And obviously, Elon Musk has ruffled some feathers, to say the least. And he has made himself some very powerful enemies in the process. How will the transfer of Twitter unfold within the next six months? Well, of course, this is something we're going to be keeping a close eye on. A skeptical eye, as of course, we also have to understand that Elon Musk's companies also include Neuralink, as NBC even ran articles a few years ago talking about how, quote, Elon Musk wants to hook your brain directly up to computers and the Internet. And when it comes to the larger technocratic future that we are all facing with larger concerns about our privacy, our security, our civil rights, we are left with the question, is Elon Musk doing this for the right purposes? Is he going to be a net positive for humanity or a net negative? Will he wield his extraordinary power correctly? Well, who in the world knows? I'm, of course, skeptical as you know, but uh, I, I think it's fair to say our, our current way uh, of doing things is definitely not the right way. And I think this is why a lot of people are excited about this change, whether it be good or bad. At least it's not the old status quo that, of course, is filled with corruption, indecency, censorship and the destruction of human rights kind of crazy how a lot of people have all of their eggs and, and their hope for future in an eccentric billionaire. And uh, yeah, that, that's literally where we are at. And that's why I have decided to build LukeUncensored.com, my own platform, where I don't have to rely on the future of an eccentric billionaire and his promises. And I could just say and do whatever I want without any moderation, without any censorship, without any fear of retribution on my own platform, LukeUncensored.com, where I provide new videos almost every single day, as well as three master classes, access to exclusive events that are going to be happening in the future, merchandise and shirts available to you that are exclusive only to members at cost. You get all of that, plus a lot more, all through LukeUncensored.com. We're building a forum where all of us could talk to each other, find each other in our local neighborhoods and communities and cities. There's going to be meetups, trainings, all of that available only to members of LukeUncensored.com. We're working really hard there on our own platform because we know the, the, the future of, of speech online is, is very un unstable. There's a lot of powerful forces pushing back against it. And there's a chance that, of course, it may never truly be the same world as it was before when the internet was first created, a magical time where, of course, you could speak freely, express ideas, and delve into an un unfiltered, honest world that wasn't just a carefully curated Mickey Mouse experience and existence that, of course, is tightly controlled by multinational corporations that are absolutely unaccountable to you and, of course, just want to make a buck off of you. The internet was once great. We're trying to build it back up, and this is why our platform, our forum, is going to be the start of it. LukeUncensored.com, your participation fuels and funds our future projects. We have a lot of them. Sign up right now on LukeUncensored.com. Click the link down in the description below to find out more. Now, I think it's very fair to say that within the last few days, the situation in Ukraine has definitely gotten a lot worse. This, as many top American military leaders have just held meetings with the president of Ukraine, signaling that, of course, there's going to be a major transition of this larger conflict between the East and the West unfolding in Ukraine. This is the U.S. Secretary of State and the U.S. Secretary of Defense traveled to Kiev, Ukraine, and held important meetings there about the future of this conflict, as, of course, 
there's a big potential of this conflict not only ongoing for years, but also spilling over to Moldova, which is a border country to Ukraine. There is a breakaway region inside of that country that is claiming to be separatists, more favorable to, of course, the Russian government. Will this be used as yet another excuse to, of course, launch another conflict inside of that country on the Ukrainian border that will expand this conflict? Well, of course, there's a big potential of this, as even previously before the president of Belarus highlighted potential plans for Russian forces to invade Moldova, whether he did this accidentally or a form of disinformation, which there has been a lot in this conflict. That, of course, is a question that a lot of people are asking themselves, as, of course, you could see here on the world map, a potential conflict in Moldova might link up particularly with the conflict unfolding near Crimea in the Donbass region and might create another very challenging situation for the rest of the world to face. Now, so far, peace talks have absolutely been ineffective and in some ways even totally stopped as, of course, the deal for an Easter truce was denied. And now it looks like this conflict is waging on specifically in the east of Ukraine, an area that is filled with allegedly a lot of rich energy deposits as there have been some exploration, recent discoveries made in this particular region, but highlight a huge potential for a lot of energy that, of course, could shift future geopolitical petro states. Will they be in control of, of Russia here in this particular region? Will they be in the control of Ukraine and the West? Well, of course, who controls this region will control a vast amount of energy coming from it in the future, which, of course, I believe has a lot to do with this current ongoing conflict that's unfolding in Ukraine. This, as the Russians have just cut two NATO nations from the their natural gas. This, of course, will affect these countries, specifically Poland and Bulgaria, which, of course, is yet another escalation of this conflict as Russia is demanding that these countries buy their energy with, of course, the Russian ruble. Poland and Bulgaria are refusing to do so. This says the Russians are using more hyperbolic, sensationalistic language, saber rattling and threatening a nuclear war, as, of course, recently, the Russian foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, literally warned that the tensions between the East and the West are worse than they were during the Cold War and that Russia now is at a war with NATO and that there's a, quote, real chance for a nuclear war, which he said the threat is very significant and, quote, cannot be underestimated, which some people are saying is a sense of defeat by the Russians. This, as even the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, is bragging about his new unstoppable nuclear weapons, specifically the Satan II missiles, which, according to him, could, quote, break through all modern defenses. And whenever you have this kind of, of talk from one single isolated political leader, you do have to understand you're dealing with a very unstable situation that is absolutely reckless, is absolutely dangerous, and we should be doing everything in our power to try to de-escalate. But it looks like we've been doing the exact opposite of that. Our policies have, of course, brought China and Russia closer together. China, that, of course, is also launching a new information campaign, PR campaign against the United States. The situation ridiculous from my own personal perspectives. As we've been telling you, this conflict is going to be a lot longer than a few days than all the other military analysts were telling you on the corporate media it was going to be. There's a potential for this conflict to literally last years. And with the reality of, of what's going on there with the weapons, with the larger proxy conflicts, I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised if that's exactly what's going to be happening here. That's just my perspective. I might be wrong. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know why down in the comment section below. But for right now, I see no kind of resolution to this larger conflict. I see it going for a long, long, long time. I don't see any side budging. They're all doubling down. They're all losing a lot of, of manpower, a lot of human life. And that absolutely is a tragedy. That is a crisis of civilizations that could, of course, endanger all of us. It's ridiculous. I've always been anti-war. I always will be anti-war because war is just absolutely freaking stupid. So yeah, we have that situation on our hand. That's my perspective. If you thought it was helpful to help you understand what's really going on here, 
share this video with your friends and, and family members. It's more imperative than ever. We've been warning about these threats for a very long time. They are now here. They are now real. They are now right in front of us. And we've been prevented from spreading these ideas because of big tech social media censorship. LukeUncensored.com doing another video, more perspective, broader perspective on this. You could watch it right now just by clicking the link down in the description below and seeing more of these larger takes. Will Elon Musk help us? Will he be a net negative? Well, we're only going to see. I made a particular video about all these topics that expand on it further, which you could watch here. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on wearechange.org.